Hello Blue Marble Riders and thank you for tuning in to this Vstrom 1000 owner's first thoughts on Suzuki's latest third generation offering of the big dual sport Vstrom 1050DE. Yes, this is a voiceover and I'm riding a Gutsi Griso today, but that's just for eye candy. Never fear, as some of you know, I am both an enduro rider with a Husaberg FE390 and, more importantly, I suspect for some of you about to tune out, I currently own a Gen 2 2014 Vstrom 1000 from New. See the review here. But this video is not going to be about a love-in for the Vstrom but my honest opinion of whether I think I would upgrade to the 1050DE from my current Vstrom if I were to decide to take the plunge into true big bike off-road and ADV touring or to buy something else instead to fulfill my big bike ADV off-road desires. What this video will not be about is the 2023 standard Vstrom 1050. I've already ridden and reviewed the 2022 version of that bike, which is mostly unchanged except for a fancier TFT and some minor electronic upgrades. For that ride review, click on the link above. First, a little Vstrom 101050 history. Suzuki launched the Gen 1 big Vstrom 1000 in 2002. While this won the hearts of riders from around the world for its versatility and comfort, it was never meant to be an off-road ADV bike, despite aftermarket patches and owner mods. In 2014, Suzuki launched the Gen 2 Vstrom 1000 with major upgrades to the styling, suspension, adding ABS, traction control, and a minor upgrade to the engine, tuning and performance. Later, offering spoked wheels and claiming that the Vstrom was evolving into an all-round adventure tourer, they never really pushed the off-road aspect of the bike, claiming it was more about looks than actual off-road ability. And while it had no switchable ABS, you have to remove the fuse if you want that, and a 19-inch front wheel with its excellent suspension, optional spoke wheels, and an engine tuned for low down grunt and being relatively lightweight for the segment, it was pushed by many into the backcountry. In fact, in the hands of an experienced rider, it will more than shame a few big KTMs and GSs by keeping up easily with them off-road. Then, in 2020, came the third gen Vstrom 1050. But for a name change and some more aggressive styling, the inclusion of more advanced electronics, it was essentially the same bike sharing the same engine, suspension, wheels, tank size and gearbox. Many riders were left disappointed by Suzuki's reluctance to keep up with other manufacturers in the ADV segment. That is, until now. For 2023, Suzuki seemed to have taken the plunge and developed the third generation Vstrom 1050 into the 1050DE, a bike that Suzuki boasts is tough, nimble and ready to take you wherever you want to go, claiming the new Vstrom 1050DE is your ticket to borderless exploration. So finally, have Suzuki joined the big bite off-road ADV crowd, rubbing shoulders with the GS Adventures, KTM Super Adventure R, Africa Twins and Multistratas? And is it a bike I would consider as a true road dirt ADV bike? Suzuki claims the 1050DE is the master of adventure. In terms of design, they say the 1050DE will deliver all the excitement that adventure riding has to offer, whether riding the road or heading off to explore wilderness trails but will it? Well, Suzuki have certainly listened to Vstrom owners' years of pleading for a more dirt-capable, dirt-orientated Vstrom. They've included a whole host of genuine upgrades and changes from the standard 1050 that certainly bode well for any potential big bike ADV rider, let alone a Vstrom owner who has pined for a true dirt-worthy Vstrom. So let's dive into the details before I give you my thoughts on whether you should consider this bike as an alternative to the big ADV stalwarts from BMW or KTM, or whether you should pass on all of them and get something different. And while I've built up the differences between this bike and its predecessors, the first thing I should say is the engine is exactly the same as the standard 1050's V-Twin. It has 107 horsepower and 100 newton meters of torque coming in at 6,000 RPM. This is far more power than you will ever be able to use on the dirt and far more than enough power for two up passing in any traffic on any slope in any gear. Trust me, I do it all the time. Being a V-Twin, its off-road power delivery will be as good as it gets with grunty torque and low RPM ability in abundance. 
the range from its twenty litre tank will be surprising as the engine is a fuel miser compared with others in this category but in my honest opinion the first real factor you should consider when riding off road is not the bike's engine it's the weight of the entire machine traditionally the v-strom has always been significantly lighter than the competition my 2014 tips the scales wet at a shade over 503 pounds However, this weight advantage has been reduced with the beefed up subframe, longer suspension and larger front wheel adding 10 kilos to the standard 1050's weight. The 1050 DE tips the scales with a wet weight of 252 kilograms or 554 pounds. This is the heaviest V-Strom ever produced, but it is still 16 kilograms or 37 pounds lighter than an identical R1250 GS Adventure. Lighter than a Ducati Multistrada Enduro, a Pan America Special, and only three pounds heavier than a KTM 1290 Adventure R. So that one is a feather in its cap. Do you like what I did there? Feather? Never mind. And this trade-off for the extra weight is probably worth it. Where is that extra weight on the DE coming from then, you ask? Well, some serious off-road focus engineering has been added to the DE over previous models. Suzuki have beefed up the rear subframe to tolerate heavy, hard luggage being bounced around on dirt repeatedly. The widened, tapered handlebars add more flex and strength. The suspension travel has been lengthened by a centimeter both ends with 6.7 inches or 170 millimeters of front fork travel and 169 millimeters or 6.6 inches of travel on the rear. The 1050 DE is 5 inches longer thanks to its more dirt-friendly increased rake and trail and its longer swing arm, adding more stability off-road. Ground clearance is up 25 millimeters to 7.5 inches over the standard model. First and sixth gears have been lengthened for lower RPM at lower speeds on the dirt and when needing that overdrive-like feel on the highway for better economy. And of course, most importantly, the DE gets that much-needed 21-inch front wheel that welcomes it to the genuine off-road bike club, together with a stock aluminum bash plate. Finally, the DE gets a shorter, height-adjustable screen said to eliminate buffeting. I'll believe that when I see it. And to be more off-road friendly. Just as importantly though, it's what you can't see that also makes this a bona fide member of the ADV off-road big bike club. It now has switchable rear ABS, meaning you can now turn it off without pulling a fuse. An included gravel traction control mode which retards ignition timing allowing for limited rear wheel slip off-road as well as three other traction control modes. Motion track brake system which uses the six axis IMU to determine lean pitch and load dependent brake pressure adjustment. A hill holder system, slope dependent braking to allow confident downhill front and rear brake applications. And let's not forget about that on-road revised cruise control good in second gear or higher at engine speeds between 2000 rpm and 7000 rpm. It's also got a bi-directional quick shifter, one push easy start and low rpm clutch assist. So it's finally got the snazzy TFT as well and all the electronics found on the other bikes in the class. So now there's only two things to talk about, how it rides and how much it costs. If it rides anything like the regular 1050, holding its weight low with that big V-twin, the neutral, predictable handling and the tractable engine, it will be a peachy big ADV bike on the dirt. The recommended retail price without optional extras while hitting stratospheric levels for traditional V-Strom owners at $15,999 in the US or $18,999 Canadian in Canada is significantly lower than the competition. Compare this to the KTM Adventure R at $19,500 US or $22,500 Canadian. The equivalent Africa Twin is 17,900 US or 21,899 Canadian, while the king of the segment, the base BMW R1250 GSA, starts from 20,345 US dollars or 26,245 Canadian dollars, although I doubt you'll get one for that. 
so while the power is down compared with the bmw and ktm the price is significantly cheaper for the suzuki add to this that suzuki have incredible end of season deals and you're likely to get a de for much cheaper than the recommended retail price given my experience with the two v-strom's i've bought from new so it all sounds rather peachy doesn't it this is a great and fully capable addition to the large ADV off-road motorcycle genre. It offers yet another excellent choice in this market segment of large ADV bikes and likely the best value for money in a well-proven and reliable design. Undoubtedly there will be those GSA fans who attempt to diminish its value without ever riding it, but I know, given the regular bike holds its weight so low, that this will be every bit as good off-road as any other large ADV bike on the market right now given the great upgrades to this frame. But, and for me, it's a big but. If I have one reservation, it's that the big bike ADV genre is not for me. Some of you regular listeners probably knew where this was going. I use my V-Strom for on-road touring. As such, it is among the most comfortable and friendly long-distance bikes I've ever ridden. But, in the same way I would never consider taking a ferry, whitewater rafting, my personal preference is to never go off-road with anything weighing more than 500 pounds. Experienced as I am on enduro bikes, that's my choice. I suppose for flat forest service roads and light duty flat single tracks it would do, but if like me you like single track technical trails which allow me to get to places that I couldn't get to on a large 500 pound plus ADV bike, then this is not the bike for me. Dropping it, even with the added protection and weight of crash bars and the hard luggage, by myself would be an absolute disaster. That's why I like my 240 pound enduro bike. And that's why the largest ADV bike I would ever consider is either the T7 or the Touareg right now, with a preference for something even lighter of around 500cc that weighs in at less than 400 pounds, if we ever get that lucky. But that's my preference. What about you? The Vstrom 1050 DE is going to be a hit for many riders who want a reliable, authentic, large off-road capable ADV bike for less money than most of the competition, if not all of it. I think it's a great move by Suzuki and it shows a genuine attempt to offer something authentically able to do dirt rather than to pose on the grassy verges as the previous generations have. Let me know what you think, either as a current owner of a large ADV bike, or a V-Strom, or someone looking to get into this hugely popular motorcycle segment. Would you buy one? Have Suzuki finally done enough to tempt you into choosing one over an Africa Twin, a 1290 Adventure, or a BMW R1250 GS Adventure? And what would you like to see instead? Once again, folks, thanks for watching. This is the Blue Marble Rider, out. Once again, thanks for watching everyone. If this is the first time you've watched, please consider subscribing. I do motorcycle reviews, motorcycle related product reviews, off-road and on-road vlogs as well as tours. Even though I'm not the most diligent poster, don't forget to follow me on social media. That's Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. And to like, and especially, I'm begging you here folks, subscribe. And don't forget to click the bell so that you're notified whenever I release a video. This is the Blue Marble Rider, out.